Thank you very much. I welcome members to the 15th meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. And as always, ask members to turn off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one, instrument subject to affirmative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on. The Proceeds of Crime Act 2002, Cash Searches, Constables in Scotland, Code of Practice, Order 2015, Draft nor on the provision of early learning and childcare specified children's Scotland amendment order 2015 draft. Is the committee content with these, please? Thank you. Agenda item two, instruments subject to negative procedure, the certification of death Scotland Act 2011, authorization of cremation, death out with Scotland regulations 2015 SSO 2015 162, the Certification of Death Scotland Act 2011 Application for Review Regulations 2015 SSI 2015 163 and the Certification of Death Scotland Act 2011 Consequential Provisions Order 2015 SSI 2015 164. These three instruments, along with SSI's 2015 165 and 2015 166, which I will address later, were laid on the 2nd of April 2015 and came into force, sorry, come into force on the 13th of May. This breaches the 28-day rule, given that no account has been taken of the days when Parliament was in recess over Easter. The committee recognises that some complex issues involving representations from and discussion with various Stoke elders led to a delay in laying these instruments. However, the committee considers that where it is critical to announce in advance the coming into force date for a package of instruments, sufficient time should be built into the planning the instruments so that any required review of the provisions after consultations can be done before the announced date while respecting the requirements of section 28.2 of the Interpretation and Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010. Does the committee therefore agree to draw these three instruments to the attention of the report, Parliament under reporting ground J as they fail to comply with the requirements of section 28.2 of the Interpretation and Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010? Stuart. Uh, thank you, Convener. I do agree we should uh, draw this to attention. I, I just make the comment to underline why that is the case in part. Um, in my constituency work, I've been working with undertakers and the health board uh, on the introduction of the new system of certification. And it is clear there is significant amount of preparation has to be taken uh, place by both these parties among others, uh, and so therefore giving sufficient notice is very, very important. Although I do understand uh, that the reason for the delay is precisely because there's been interaction, um, so there ought to be reasonable knowledge. But at the end of the day, people don't know the final form of regulations until they are published, and therefore one needs time to make sure they're what you thought they were going to be and be ready to implement them. So. The reason the 28-day rule is there can, in some circumstances, be really quite significant. I think this is one of them. Okay. Yeah. I agree with that, and I think the, this um, series of instruments, uh, representing five instruments which have breached the 28-day rule, um, we really should try and do better and encourage the Scottish Government to do better. It is there for a good reason, as Stuart Stevenson has said, and we shouldn't be breaching it. Yep. Thank you. Well, if I could turn now to the Certification of Death Scotland Act 2011 post-mortem examinations, death out with Scotland, sorry, death out with the United Kingdom regulations 2015, SSI 2015 2015-165, there is a patent drafting error in the form and the schedule to the regulations. It specifies that it is a form of application under Section 19 of the Certification of Death Scotland Act 2015. Regulation 2 cites the Act correctly as enacted in 2011. The Scottish Government proposes to correct the error by means of a correction slip on the basis that it is self-evident. Well, that may be suitable in instance if agreed with the National Archives, the committee considers having regard to the fact that the only purpose of the instrument is to provide this form of application, that the patent error should be reported. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament under the general reporting ground on account of the aforementioned drafting error? Okay. As was the case with SSI's 2015, 162, 163 and 164, this instrument was laid on the 2nd of April 2015 and comes into force on the 13th of May 2015. This breaches the 28-day rule, given that no account has been taken of the days when Parliament is in recess over, Christmas, over Easter. The same comments apply to this instrument as applied to SSI's 20, 
2015, 162, 163 and 164. Does the committee therefore agree to draw this instrument to the attention of the Parliament under reporting ground J, as it too fails to comply with the requirements of section 28.2 of the Interpretation of Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010? A registration of births, deaths and marriages, Scotland Act 1965, prohibition of disposal of a body without authorisation, regulations 2015, SSI 2015 at 166. The meaning of regulation 8 and a form N in the schedule to the regulations could be clearer in a particular respect. They could be more clearly implement the policy intention that the section of Form N relating to post-mortem examinations will require to be completed by a registered medical practitioner who has appropriate expertise in pathology. The Scottish Government has undertaken to bring forward an amendment to make this clarification at the next appropriate opportunity. Given that Form N is significant as having effect to release body parts for disposal after a post-mortem examination, the committee considers the provisions could be clarified by an amendment as soon as possible. Does the committee agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament under reporting ground H, as the meaning of Regulation 8 and of Form N in the schedule to the regulations could be clearer? Agreed. Does the committee also agree to call on the Scottish Government to clarify the intended provision by, making forward an, by bringing forward an amending instrument as soon as possible? Agreed. Thank you. Finally, as was the case with SSI's 2015 162 to 165, this instrument was laid on the 2nd of April and comes into force on the 13th of May. This breaches the 28th day rule, given that no account has again been taken of the days when Parliament was in recess over Easter. Again, the same comments that applied to the previous instruments apply to this. Does the committee therefore agree to draw this instrument to the attention of the Parliament and reporting down J as it fails to comply with the requirements of Section 28.2 of the Interpretation and Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010? Thank you. Does the committee also agree to reinforce the point that when it comes to a package of instruments, sufficient time should be built into planning instruments so that any required review of the provisions after consultation can be done before the announced date? while still respecting the requirements of Section 28.2 of the Act. Thank you. Turning now to Agenda Item 3, instruments not subject to any parliamentary pr procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Act of Sederant, Ordinary Cause Rules Amendment, Proving the Tenor and Reduction 2015, SSI 2015-176, nor on the Criminal Justice and Licensing Scotland Act 2010, Commencement Number 12, Order 2015, SSI 2015-177, nor on the Community Care and Health Scotland Act 2002, Commencement Number 4, Order 2015, SSI 2015-179, nor finally on the registration of births, stillbirths, deaths and marriages, Prescription of Forms, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-180. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item four is the Education Scotland Bill, and the purpose of this item is for the committee to consider the delegated powers in the bill at stage one. Members will have seen the Delegated Powers Memorandum and the briefing paper. The committee is invited to agree the questions it wishes to raise with the Scottish Government on the powers. It's suggested these questions are raised in written correspondence and the committee will have the opportunity to consider the responses at a future meeting before the draft report is considered. Section 7 of the Bill relates to initial assessments of the need for Gaelic medium primary education and applies where an education authority receives a parental request under Section 5 of the Bill. <coughs> and I'll refer hereafter to Gaelic Medium Primary Education as GMPE. Where such a request is made, the authority is required to make an initial assessment for the need of GMPE, both within the area designated as a GMP assessment area under Section 6 and within the specified child's year group. Section 7.5 provides that where, following an initial assessment, the authority is satisfied that the various conditions of Section 6 are met, the authority must determine that there is potential need for GMPE in the area. There are two conditions in subsection 6 in A and B. Paragraph A provides that the child specified in the request and children resident in that GP assessment area are in the same year group as the specified child and in respect of whose parents the authority holds information about demand, as mentioned in section 5.3, total five or more in number. Paragraph B provides that, that the demand for GMPE in respect of children in a different year group is at or is likely to increase to a level where the authority that the authority considers reasonable. 
Section 7.7 provides that Scottish ministers may by regulations amend Section 7.6a so as to substitute a different number for the number of children there specified. The power also enables ministers to provide that the number of children specified is to be read as a different number in the application of that subsection to such local education authorities as may be specified in the regulations. In essence, the power enables Scottish ministers to change the threshold figure by determining whether there is a demand for GMP, sorry, for determining whether there is a demand for GMP in a particular area sufficient to justify securing GMP or to apply different threshold figures for different education authorities. Power is subject to negative procedure and while not altering the substance of the duty placed on education authorities to determine whether there is a need for GMP in a particular area when a certain threshold is reached, the power is nonetheless significant to the practical operation of Part 2 of the Bill and its scope and application. Does the Committee therefore agree to ask the Scottish Government for further justification of the choice of negative procedure for the exercise of this power, given its apparent significance and the fact that it permits the variation of the threshold figure beyond which an education authority must determine that there is potential need for GMP in a particular assessment area? John. I mean, I think this is very important, actually, because uh, I think correctly what you've just said stresses the, the, how significant the numbers could be. I mean, probably f four, five or six would not be a significant difference, but there could be more significant changes made. So I, th I think it is quite fundamental. I'd certainly like to hear the explanation for why they have done this. Thank you. Section 10 of the bill relates to full assessments of the need for GMP where at the conclusion of the initial assessment process, an education authority determines that there is a potential need for GMP in that assessment area, the authority must either carry out a full assessment or proceed directly to securing GMP. Where the authority concludes at the end of the initial assessment that there is not a potential need for GMP in the area, it is not required to take any further action. However, it may still exercise its discretion and either undertake a full assessment or proceed directly to securing GMPE. The full assessment procedure requires the Education Authority to consult with the bodies as specified in Section 10.3. The Education Authority must then decide whether to secure the provision of GMP in a particular assessment area. Section 10.7 sets out a list of matters which the Education Authority must have regard to in making its decision. In addition to the matters specified in the list in Section 10.7, the authority must also have regard to any other matters it considers to be relevant to the decision. Section 10.8 provides that Scottish ministers may by regulations modify sections 10.3 or 10.7. They may also make such other modifications to section 10 as they consider necessary or expedient in consequence of modification of section 10.3. And that power is subject to negative procedure and permits the modification of primary legislation. Does the committee therefore agree to ask the Scottish Government why it's considered appropriate that the power in section 10.8b is subject to negative procedure, given <coughs> that it permits modifications to primary legislation, the nature of which is not specified beyond the requirement that ministers consider them to be necessary or expedient in consequence of any modification of subsection 3? Yes. Yeah. Section 12 of the Bill enables the making of regulations which would extend the provisions of section, sorry, of part 2 of the Bill relating to GMPE to early learning and childcare. At present, part 2 applies only in respect of primary school education. A request under section 5 can only require the education authority to assess the need for Gallic medium education in primary schools. This power is subject to negative procedure except where it is exercised to make textual modifications to primary legislation. The power would permit a request made under Section 5 to be treated by the Education Authority as a request to assess the need for Gallic medium education in the area in respect of the duty pr to provide early learning and childcare. Section 12.4a provides that regulations made to extend Part 2 to early learning and childcare may modify Part 2 of the 19. Uh, 80 Act or any other enactment. Section 12B, sorry, 12.4B provides that such regulations may provide for any provision in Part 2, the 1980 Act, and any other enactment to apply with or without modifications. 
The power is generally to be subject to negative procedure, but where it is exercised to, to make textual amendments to primary legislation, the affirmative procedure will apply. The extension of, to, of Part 2 to early learning and childcare would represent a significant departure in policy terms from the position under the Bill at present, as the assessment process presently applies only in respect of primary education. Does the Committee therefore agree to ask the Scottish Government for further explanation as to why this power is not subject to affirmative procedure in its entirety, rather than the negative procedure where the regulations made in its exercise do not make textual amendments to primary legislation? Thank you. Our next meeting is next week, the 12th of May, and I close this meeting. Thank you.